announcement came out, I showed it to Pat and I said, let's go to this informational meeting. It was something different. I was very interested. I had, uh, we had never been and we thought this would be a great trip. Our kids were uh, much older. Uh, so this was something that just Pat and I did. I had never time. been and I always wanted to go. My idea was for my older son, who was becoming a bar mitzvah, I wanted to go to Israel with the family. And when we learned about Har Shalom going on a trip with our Hazan leading the trip and find that friends are going, we decided let's join them. It'll be a really a great family community experience. It was a group trip. I mean, it was a family vacation, but it was the best part of a family vacation without the bad parts. You didn't have the how, you know, how many minutes till I get there in the back of the car. This was a, a trip where you had to travel. And I don't think I ever heard any of the kids complain once. When do we get there? I mean, being on the bus was part of the trip for them. So our ages ranged from five to 14. And nobody was bored. Nobody felt held back because we had the five-year-old. And the 14-year-old was just as interested uh, as, as anybody else. We had a Friday night service, a Kabbalat Shabbat, right on the beach. And I think just being there in and of itself was so beautiful and special. And the weather was perfect. It, was, it couldn't have been nicer. The sky, I remember the sky being perfectly clear, a beautiful service with beautiful music. And here we were standing in a circle among our closest friends and our children with their closest friends. Really everywhere we went was, was fascinating. The Tel Dan Nature Reserve was great. Uh, it was neat to see that even in the desert and in, in, in the Middle East, you can stand in water that was 40 degrees. Uh, and it actually was snowfall runoff. Masada, it was very hot. <laughs> Pat took the cable car up, but I, I took the, uh, the snake path. I think I was like the third person up there. The, from the historical context, knowing what was built there, let alone what happened there, I thought was fascinating. When you saw how the Romans started building this gigantic road up the mountain, that feat alone was absolutely phenomenal to me. Uh, Masada was a, was, was a special place because that's where you know, we all wore the Harshalom t-shirts there, and we all got together for pictures up on the top. Masada was sort of like the midpoint, and it's, that's when things really started to gel. One of the highlights of the trip was in Jerusalem, where my older son was becoming a bar mitzvah. For Shabbat, for Saturday, families decided whether they wanted to go to services in the area or sleep in. So I said, you know what, I want to go to the Western Wall for Shabbat, this is, just to experience that, see what it's like. So I took my son and I took another family son. We're walking toward the wall, we're walking through the shuk in the morning, this is like 10 o'clock in the morning Shabbat, there's no one on the street. We get to the wall and obviously there's a large platform in the area and we walk to the entrance and a man comes over to me and says, oh, do you have a son who's coming to Bar Mitzvah? I said, yes, he says, good, come with us. And next thing you know, they're having a service to celebrate my son and the other son's bar mitzvah. Just being invited there, they brought other men along, they were singing and dancing, they made a special announcement about the bar mitzvah, and originally for us, it was just going to have an experience of being an observer. We weren't an observer, we were a participant. And it was really special. They announced the children's name, um, we were part of the whole event. It was very special. It was very touching for us to be at the wall, to be included as part of that.
people who got to have their bar mitzvahs. Not only the kids, but there also were two women who had um, bat mitzvahs who hadn't done it before. And I wasn't expecting it to be as beautiful of a moment as it ended up being. It was so different from having your typical bar mitzvah in a service where as the, the parent or as a guest, you're sitting out sort of in the audience and you're observing it all. Here we all were shoulder to shoulder, right next to each of the children and the women and uh, you know everybody who participated, we, we all were part of the whole thing. It was um, very moving and um, brought tears to my eyes the whole time. It was hard not to cry because it was just so, uh, so special. I, I know that the only way that you could experience something like that was right there in Jerusalem. I loved Safat. They are more than anywhere else. You have the sacred and the secular really come together. You have your black hatters that are there studying, waiting for the Messiah, and then your hippie artisans selling their wares to the tourists. Yeah, I love that city. Like Spot, for instance. I had no idea that there was this mystical city. That was just so incredible to get, you know, to see this storied place in person. Uh, during the time that we were there, there were, there were demonstrations based off of Fair Housing Acts. So we're walking on Solomon Street, and all of a sudden this massive crowd of people, very peaceful people, are walking down Solomon Street. And I turned to one of, uh, I, I turned to someone who was walking with me, and well, first of all, I had to take pictures of it because I thought that was really cool and get video. But as the mob got larger, I ducked into the store that, uh, the first, the closest store I could get to, which happened to be the Gabrielli store. And so I ended up in the store and ended up talking to the person who was helping us behind the counter, who happened to be Mr. Gabrielli. So I ended up meeting the man who actually makes made my talit, because everybody throughout the trip started to acquire these Gabrielli talit. So you can sort of see the people who have been to Israel on these Israel trips, because we all seem to have these beautiful handmade talit. A special thing about being at the wall that I thought was incredible was being able to, you know, go up and touch the wall, take uh, the notes that we had written and put them in ourselves. I remember when my father was very ill, I, I wrote a note for him and gave it to a good friend of mine who was traveling and he put it in for me. And I just was really happy to be able to do that myself. And we all did that. My kids did it and almost everybody did it. We put notes in the wall and of course, as my younger son said, I want to put it as high as possible. So he decides he's gonna climb on my shoulder <laughs> to get his note as high as possible because no one could reach it. It was a great opportunity for us to be, to be there, to touch it, for myself to touch it, for my wife to touch it, my children. Low ceiling, that, that's a great part of the trip and one that I highly recommend everybody do. Low ceiling was the term that was used as we were walking down Hezekiah's tunnel in Old Jerusalem. It's an old tunnel. There are no lights, so we were all wearing headlights. It was pretty much yelled by my, at the time, I guess three foot tall daughter who was leading the group, and then Haley, my daughter, was in charge of actually yelling out low ceiling to the group behind us so that nobody would actually hit their heads on the ceiling. Low ceiling. Everyone has that image of exactly what that was, exactly where we were when we used that term, being in that tunnel and, and hearing the history of how it was made and what it was for, and feeling the cold water as we walked through it. Low ceiling.